it's really just the largest of the large uh, internet uh, uh, service providers that are going to have to start um, providing it end to end. Uh, with uh, <clears throat> the common net uh, TLDs not being signed yet, um, are there any benefits that uh, companies that use those domains um, can realize now by uh, signing their, their domains? Um, are there any benefits that they don't get and are there any additional vulnerabilities? Um, the benefits that you get are what you're going to get from the root first. Um, so you will not be able to take full advantage of, of uh, DNSSEC in COM or NET today um, because those, those uh, uh, zones are not currently signed. But they are on a roadmap to be signed. And, and essentially what you're starting to see is that these top level domains are sort of starting from the smaller ones up to the larger ones kind of in that order as, as we roll them out. But by this time next year, you'll be able to take full advantage of all those features in, in DNSSEC for, for common net at that level. Can you repeat with a microphone, please? Thank you. With, with everyone opening up their firewalls to larger DNS packets, for, uh, 4K instead of 512 bytes, and you know, opening up TCP port 53 on their firewalls and such, are, are you seeing a move towards uh, that being abused more? Like, I know DNS has historically been used for command and control for botnets and stuff. Have you seen any other moves towards uh, abusing that new packet size or, or making use of DNS, th th those larger packet sizes, for uh, malicious intent? So, so uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the entertaining aspects about uh, being in the DNS tech space is you you do hear some of the some arguments brought up a decent amount. Um, the denial of service threat in DNS is real, but I said DNS, not necessarily DNS sec. Like bad guys haven't been waiting for all the DNS sec changes to run huge DNS floods, that's been going on for years. Um, the ability to uh, get a large number of hosts to emit a large amount of cache data is already the, uh, the status quo. Uh, we do need to do a lot of work around DOS. It's a problem that's only going to get worse. Um, but it's not special to DNSSEC. Uh, and the changes that DNSSEC are, are, are implementing uh, they change things a little, but they're, uh, uh, we're already in the red zone. We don't need DNSSEC to move us over. They're just taking a bad, a bad problem and making it somewhat worse. Slightly at best. Right. I, I think you raise a good point, but I don't think it's any different than port 443 or port 80 where people will come up with creative ways of, of getting Skype out the door or something like that by by now allowing port 53, I, I don't think it's any different than that. Um, I, I do think though that, that the, the, the risk is probably no worse than it would have been before. It's just another port that allows you know, larger packets through it. But I'll tell you, <coughs> um, it's, not, it's not as bad as port 443 for example because port 443 would allow a very long standing connection to exist where even port 53, even with DNSSEC, is not going to allow a long persistent connection. So it's actually better in that respect than it, than it would be. And, and by the way, I think you're going to see some, some firewall manufacturers that are, going, that are going to start doing some inspection of those larger packets at the, at, at, for, for port 53. It's not going to happen probably in the next release of the software, but it'll be sometime in the next 18 months or so. Good. Well, if there's not any more questions, we'll actually bring this panel session uh, to a wrap. I want to thank all of you for coming. We thank all of you for helping to move DNSSEC forward and further in implementation. And we thank you for the excellent questions and uh, a last hand. And thank you to all the panelists. Thank you very much.